Hey there everyone, Filcho here and welcome to my channel. Gold in Sardew Valley is really important since you have to use it daily to either get seeds to plant on your farm, buy raw materials, build or upgrade buildings on the farm, or buy some tools you will need later on in the game. Making money in Sardew Valley is not that hard overall, but making massive amounts of money in the game can be quite challenging, but it's still possible and we will be exploring those ways in this video. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing since it helps me out a lot and I would love to hear your ways of making money in Stardew Valley down below. So let's get started. The first way we have in earning massive amounts of gold in Stardew Valley is by following the old and trusty way that many know about and that is wine making. By using kegs you can make wine that can sell for a lot and the most profitable crops for that are the star fruit and the ancient fruit. So both of these fruits can be quite nice to make wine out of, but it can be quite hard to get them at the start. The ancient seed is found randomly from artifact spots around Stardew Valley, and by donating it to the museum, it will give you a plantable ancient seed that you can plant on your farm. Getting this in your first season will be a miracle, and it can help you out by increasing the number of seeds you have, and when you get the greenhouse, you will be able to plant them all there and it will keep producing all year round. The plant needs a whole season to grow and it produces only in spring, summer and the fall season, but not in the winter one. So after the fall season, the ancient seeds will die out as any ordinary crops, but by planting them in the greenhouse, they can live forever. The base price of the ancient fruit is 550 gold, while when made into wine, it's 1650 gold. If age, the wine sells for 3,300 gold, and with the artisan profession, it can go up to 4,620 gold, which in total would get you up to 560,000 gold for a full basement of casks. The other one is the starfruit, which you can buy from Sandy at the desert for 400 gold, or by getting one from Gunter after donating 15 pieces at the museum. The starfruit can be only planted in the summer season and it needs 13 days to mature, but it has the second highest sell price of any crop in the game. You will first need to buy a lot of them from Sandy, making it a big investment, but afterwards you can just craft your own seeds with the seed makers, increasing your profit from then onwards. The base starfruit sells for 750 gold, while made into wine it sells for 2250 gold. If you age it, it sells for 4500 gold, and with the artisan profession, it goes up to 6,300 gold, which in total can get you up to 760,000 gold for a full basement of casks. So to summarize, both of these will take a bit of time to set up since you start with one ancient fruit and also you will need access to the desert in order to buy the star fruit seeds, but these will give you a lot of profit in the long run, where you will be able to sell the wine for huge quantities of gold after it ages. And after unlocking Ginger Island, you can further increase your production of starfruit since you'll be able to plant the crop there all year round and you can also fill up the greenhouse with ancient seeds. The second way that we have that you can make a lot of gold from is from the fish ponds. The fish ponds were added in the 1.4 update and I also made a video which is the best fish you can keep in a fish pond. You can watch that video on the link above or in the description below so feel free to check it out. To make a lot of gold in the game with the fish ponds, you need to get your hands on a lava eel, and after that everything is much easier. To get a lava eel, you can catch it by fishing in the 100th level of the mines or at the top of the volcano dungeon. You need to catch one and afterwards you can just use the fish pond to multiply them and increase the ponds you have with lava eels. This process can take quite a while and it will require a lot of resources to achieve since all of the lava eels will want certain items to be delivered to them in order for them to increase their pond size. The items will be ranging from normal and accessible ones to some rare and expensive items. After upgrading the pond size to 10, the lava eels will have a chance to produce 1 to 3 rows per pond which will further increase your profit. They will also be able to produce gold ores, magma geodes and some spicy lava eels which can be a really decent boost to you. The lava eel sells for 700 gold, 
while the raw it produces sells for 380 gold. This can be processed using the preserve jars in which the raw can be aged and its price increase to 760 gold. And with the artisan profession, it can reach a price of 1064 gold. With this price, if you have a shed filled with preserve jars, you can make a lot of gold. So you have a shed filled with preserve jars and you have a constant supply of eel row, it can fetch you quite a lot of gold since you can put around 136 preserve jars in one upgraded shed and you can earn around 145,000 gold with all of those producing aged lava eel row. The aging process takes from 2 to 3 days so every 2 to 3 days you have that income for yourself, increasing your maximum profit for your farm. Now for the next way of earning a lot of gold, and that is the quickest and most passive way of them all, but it will take a considerable amount of gold and raw materials to pull it off at first, and that is the honey plantation. Producing honey is a passive income for the farm, but to earn the most gold you will need to produce flower honey since that one sells for a lot. The most profitable flower to make honey of is the fairy rose flower, followed by the poppy. The poppy grows in the summer season and it sells for 380 gold, while with the artisan profession it can sell for 532 gold. And the fairy rose grows in the fall season and it sells for 680 gold, where with the artisan profession sells for 902 gold, making it the most expensive flower to keep. Now the way to make the most money from the honey is to just plant a few flowers on the farm and surround them with beehives and just wait and every 4 days you will receive the honey that you can sell. The more beehives you have, the more profit you will earn, where if you have some huge amounts of beehives you can earn tremendous amounts of gold, but that can be done on the farm alone, since there you will keep animals, crops and more. The most optimal place to place a huge amount of beehives will be the ginger island farm, especially the area around the pond. There you can plant a few fairy rose flowers in the sand, and since the season never changes on ginger island, you will never have to replace or replant those flowers ever again. I made a video on the setup that you can check out above or in the description below on how to make this setup work for you. The only things you need to know is that this will need quite the investment to pull it off since it requires a tremendous amount of raw resources to craft the number of beehives shown in the video. With that setup I earn 430,000 gold every 4 days which is a huge amount of gold where in a season you can earn the amount needed for the return scepter or some of the war pillars that you can buy in the game. The fourth way of earning money in Stardew Valley will be by just selling the iridium you find in the skull caverns. This can sound quite bad since iridium is precious for the game and used for many crafting recipes, but after a while it can also be sold if you have large amounts of it already stacked in some chest. The process of getting the iridium is by just bypassing the top levels of the skull caverns by using staircases and you can check out the video I made on this topic in the description below. You need to have a good luck day a decent amount of bombs to destroy the ores and just go down in the skull caverns until you see the clock hit 12 pm. Afterwards, you will come back home and just wait in the morning to process all of the ore into bars. The base price of an iridium bar is 1000 gold, but with the blacksmith profession it can go up to 1500 gold, so selling a lot of bars can fetch you a decent amount of gold depending on your haul from the skull caverns. And the last and fifth way to earn a huge amount of gold in Stardew Valley is by keeping the majestic pig on your farm. Pigs are a walking treasure trove for every player in Stardew Valley and having a huge number of pigs on your farm will bring you a lot of profit in the long run. To get the pig for your barn, you first need to get the last upgrade of your barn which is the deluxe barn. Afterwards, you can just visit Marnie's place and buy a few pigs from her. The price of the pig is 16,000 gold and by just buying a few of those you can afterwards wait for them to reproduce by themselves and increase their numbers naturally without paying any more gold. The base price of the truffle is 625 gold, while the iridium quality truffle is 1250 gold. Since they benefit from the gatherer and the botanist professions, you will have a chance of double harvesting a single truffle and all of the truffles you will pick up will be of iridium quality, increasing your profits by a huge margin. When processed the truffle oil's price is 1065 gold, 
while with the artisan profession it can go up to 1491 gold. So with a lot of picks and a lot of shuffles, you can earn a huge amount of gold daily, making your income skyrocket. So those were the ways you can earn a lot of gold in Stardew Valley. What do you think? Which is the best way to earn gold in the game and which one do you use for yourself on your farm? Let me know down below. I hope you found today's video helpful and if you did, don't forget to leave a like. Also consider subscribing to my channel since it's free and you won't miss out any of my future videos. In any case, thank you for watching, I hope you have an amazing day today and I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe.